welcome back to 100 days of code uh, my name is shruti and if you have no idea what i'm saying we at here technologies are running a 100 days of code campaign uh, in this every day since the 1st of april we have been posting a task for you to solve and the way to solve it is uh, using our apis to and uh, use them to make a map Uh, and any application based on lo location technology so the more you use our apis the more you'll know about location technology and how to use them in your day to day life and so this tutorial or this video is basically a solutions video this one in particular is for solutions for days 6 through 10 if you want the solutions to previous uh, days you'll find the link in the description it's also in our playlist 100 days of code on youtube you can also find it on our developer blog So uh, what we did last in the last five days was to get a basic map, uh, set a, set the center, get the basic default UI. This was it. You could pan the map. You could zoom the, zoom the map. Let's begin with day six. So the task for day six was to add a tilt to the map and to rotate it in such a way that the west half of the globe is in the top the top of the map. Right now the map is. uh centered and it is uh the normal view which is like the north on top so you have all the northern countries on the top and the southern on the south so what we want to do is we want to tilt this map and then also rotate it in such a way that this part is on the top so again if you have any doubt what to do always go to developer.here.com i'm going to go to the documentation section and as we are dealing with interactive maps or vector tiles so we will go to the javascript section you can go in either of them and within the javascript section i'm going to click on api reference now api reference is where the inner hidden parameters or or the more uh, distinct parameters lie so i'm going to go to h.map and what i want is to have a view model because a tilt of the map or rotation comes under view model so i'll go to view model go all the way down and here it is so i have i have a tilt of the map and um and then you have the heading so the heading is basically the rotation of the map the relative angle uh, with respect to the north and then because i want the west to be in the north i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees in the positive direction so if you look at what it looks like it will look like i use the map object and then i get the view model so because we've already set the view model initially i need to get it so i have get the view model um yeah and then this is the look at data right and i want to set a certain look at data so i'm going to set look at data and within that i want to set the tilt and the heading so we have the tilt at 60 degrees this is super simple and we have the heading at 90 degrees so if you save this you will see that our map has tilted if you have noticed it's not straight anymore it's not 2d anymore but it has tilted and also if you see this the directions have changed as well so you have the west half of the globe on the top side of the map there it is day 6 let's move on to day 7 so day 7 was all about getting browser position now i think some of you have hinted that we may get it from geocoder but we are not there yet so what we're going to do is just get the position from the browser this is this is a function of the browser we don't have really anything to do with it we're just going to use the location if the browser grants us permission and there was a hint which says uh, check out our blog we have we have a similar blog so i'm i'm just going to type in browser location and in the blog section there is a nice little blog by nick which is exactly detect location with a web browser so if you scroll down you'll see the code to get the browser location i'm just going to write method to so it says get browser position location whatever you want and i'm going to write 
I'm going to use the same code. So I have get browser position. And then I'm just going to copy this part over here. So you have this. And then I'm going to make this as an alert. I don't want it in my log. I just want the position in my log. So if I save this, it should ask me allow access location or don't. And then if you allow it, it will give you the location. So this is this is exactly my current address. So it will give you latitude and longitude. Uh, also altitude and accuracy, depending on how accurate the the your browser can give you position. So here you have the browser location and that's it. Now from here, day eight is super simple. It just says that place a marker wherever you got the position. So this is where I get my position. So I'm gonna, and as you see, you can get it, you get it as latitude and longitude. And if you remember that our format is lat and long, so I'm gonna save it in that format. So I'm gonna say let browser position equals and so I have this position dot chords so my latitude will be position dot chords dot latitude the whole word and my longitude is position sorry position dot chords dot longitude so I have my position here and I'm going to use this position to to display a marker on so again if I quickly go to the documentation and in that vector tile JavaScript on the left hand side you'll see a nice little scroll bar where it says map objects and in the map objects, you'll see you can add markers, circles, uh, rectangles, but we are interested in a marker. So I'm going to create an object called marker. Let me just copy this, but so that I can finish it faster. And then, yeah. What you want to put inside a marker is the position in the form of latitude and longitude. So I'm just going to copy this one. And then once you've done this, you need to still add the, the marker on the map. So I'm going to write map dot object. So add object. And then I'm going to use our marker that we created. So the marker object goes in here. And now if you save this, you should the browser should ask me for location yes and then you should see a nice little marker on the map and there you go simple as it gets day eight of 100 days of code we are almost there almost there so let's begin with day nine of 100 days of code and day nine was now to change this marker although i personally do like this this uh blue marker or whatever this color is but I like to personalize my marker. So day nine was to have an SVG personalized marker instead, uh, icon, sorry, for the marker instead of the plain, uh, the general marker. So again, what I'm going to do is create an SVG marker. Uh, I have one created already. The easiest way to is maybe like use a draw.io. And if you use this, uh, I'm going to quickly show you how I created this. So you don't need to do the same, but if I create this uh, for 30 by 30 and then have another circle inside it, which is 10 by 10 and have it in the center. So you get a nice little marker and then you have the possibility to export it as an SVG. So if you do this, you get it, exp you can export it in the form of SVG. I already have done it. It was just to show you how you could do it. I have already copied it on on uh, 
in my ID. So I'm, I'm just going to use this for you. So I got this by uh, withdraw.io. You can also create your own. So I'm just going to paste it here, uh, which says let position uh, icon. So I've called it position icon. And it was a green dot inside the white dot, the little position icon, as you can see. Uh, there's uh, the colors are defined, uh, the sizes are defined. And now I want this as my icon in the marker. So the reason I've been calling it icon is because it's the type icon is what I'm going to use. So uh, let position icon be an object of the type icon h dot map dot icon. I think I'm going to have to count the number of times I'm seeing icon in this one. Uh, here you go. And then the place where I define my marker, I want to add the property of the icon here. So I say this and then add my position icon. I swear this is the last time I'm saying the word. And if you if you allow location, you can see a nice little dot where the location is instead of the aqua marker. So there you go. And so we finally come down to day 10. Uh, now day 10 of the 100 days of code was uh, to get the position of wherever you click on the map. So as you can see right now, if I click on the map, nothing is really happening. I can drag it, pan it, but I'm not getting anything if I want to put, let's say, a marker here. So what I'm essentially trying to do is react to an event, which is the tapping or clicking of mouse, right? So again, when in doubt, go to developer.here.com. And when I go there, I check map events. And what I'm looking at is different events and how to handle them. What are they called? So I'm, I want to check the click or the tap event. And you can read what it, uh, what it stands for. And then I want to add a, an event listener for it. So I'm going to just copy this example here. And in this example, I'm doing nothing but writing a event listener for the event tap. And instead of logging, logging all of this, I'm just going to log the event response. So whatever the response is, I'm going to log it. So if I go back here to the browser, if I click, I can see that I have something called a current pointer, not a latitude and longitude, but a viewport X and viewport Y. And I need to get my position from the viewport X and viewport Y. I'm quickly going to stop this log because I don't want crowding in my log. And so again, uh, as I said, what we get is a viewport X and viewport Y and I want my position from it. So what I'm going to do is go to the API reference. And in the API reference, I'm going to go to h.map and to this interesting service called screen to geo um, yeah so we need to look at something called screen to geo let me see where i can get it so you have h and then you have h dot map and here you go yeah screen to geo so what screen to geo is uh, from the screen, it gives you the geo coordinates as the, uh, as the name says. And what it returns to you is the X and Y. And what it, what the, what the input is, uh, sorry, the, what the input is, is X and Y. So the viewport X and viewport Y. And what you get is the geo coordinates or the geo location in the form of a latitude and longitude. So the way I'm going to use it is here where I get the event I'm going to say that I want let's let's call it a pointer so let pointer be event dot this is current pointer so event dot current pointer and then console 
dot log. So map dot screen to geo. So you want screen to geo and you want to have the pointer pointer dot viewport x comma pointer dot viewport y so if you pass these two you should get what you should you should get in the console is the geolocation let's see so I've clicked randomly perfect we have the latitude and longitude so there you go you have the 10th day of 100 days of code sorted I hope you're uh, also reading our blogs the link is in the description if you uh, find the video not uh, not very informative you also have the blogs keep following our Twitter channel here dev where we are posting a task every day for 100 days and we are also posting tiny little mini videos of the solutions for every day so keep following us there keep reading our blogs keep uh, commenting if you want on the blogs or on the videos if you want to see something else on on 100 days if you want to see a specific api in 100 days we can we might include it later in uh, in the series so hope you follow 100 days of code and happy coding